Hello everyone, Crash here, this is RTA Motorsports, and I managed to pick up some good budget 27 inch gaming monitors. These are the Spectres there from Amazon. They were actually on sale, and we also picked up the Asus Bezel Free Kit. Uh, we're gonna be basically throwing it on the rig, seeing if we can even get it to work. I know they're mixed match resolutions from our CHG90, our Samsung 32 by nine monitor, but there's some software we could use to kind of get this to work. Let's get going. Welcome to RTA Motorsports. So I always wanted to upgrade our 24 inch monitors. Those were the original monitors that I had when I first built my first PC. 227s, just for editing purposes, being able to see things clearly. Excited just to have 27s in general. And then the goal is every once in a while, if I wanna do some triple screen gaming, it's not gonna be a permanent setup. We'll move one monitor to the other side of this CHG90, uh, throw on the Asus bezel free kit, go for it. And then when I go back to editing, move it back. <laughs> I know that's not ideal, but my wife's, uh, her office is right over here. Her setup's over here. I don't wanna encroach on her space. So I'm basically gonna have multiple power cables and wire setups just so I can move one. It's really not that big of a deal. We mostly just use the one monitor anyway. So I'm excited to get this going. I'm also kind of questioning whether or not we could even get this to work because they are different screen resolutions entirely. I kind of read that the screen height of the CHG90, the 49 inch, is about the same as the 27s. So hopefully this will work out. They are different brands, different everything. So yeah, let's, let's get to unboxing. Okay, so first we're gonna start with the monitors for unboxing. This is the 27 inch Spectre LED monitor. Okay, it's the model number E275W. There you go. It seems to have decent reviews on there. It's only a 75 Hertz monitor. It does use AMD's FreeSync te technology. If you do use Nvidia, like we do for your GPU, you're constrained where if you wanted to do Nvidia surround with three screens, you need to have three of the same monitors and resolutions. Uh, to get that to work. And that's why we're using like third-party software to try to get this to work for what we're trying to do. Because built into NVIDIA, they kind of constrain you. Um, so we would need three Samsung CHG90s, which would take up my entire <laughs> office. Um, but if you wanted to do this with, if, let's just say if you play Project Cars 2 a lot, um, built into Project Cars 2, there's a utility where you could do this what we're gonna be doing with software built into Project Cars 2. So you could set what monitors you, you're using. You could use three different monitors and you could get that all set up and running right within Project Cars. Okay, so right at the top of the box, we have part of the stands. We have some power cables. Okay, there's the screen itself, really thin bezel. And then we also have the book. You have a, looks like an HDMI cable in the packaging as well. So that's awesome. Twist and it goes right in. And the monitor itself, we'll just drop that on. All right, that's one done. Actually, pretty nice and clean looking monitor. Uh, there's also a little piece of plastic down here. Really nice, really, really nice. I mean, for the cost for a 27 inch monitor, yes, it's only 75 Hertz, which is better than 60 Hertz, but it does have FreeSync technology. I'm not sure what the range is there, um, but yeah. Let's get the other one out. All right, everyone, so this is the current setup. You can see the Samsung CHG90. I moved my case behind so that way I could fit another monitor here. No big deal there. I could always slide it back and forth. Uh, this is the Sim Experience AccuForce Pro V2 and uh, you know, pod mic and all that. So this is our setup that we normally race with and stream with. We're gonna be putting a monitor here and a monitor over there. And yeah, well, we'll see if they, we can actually get this going and how it may look. Kind of looks like we may have to move a few things, but uh, they look about the exact same. Oh, they are. Oh, that's gonna. That's gonna fit beautifully. We'll put one there, we'll put one on the other side and, and start getting them connected. At this point, I'm gonna try to install the clips and we'll, we're gonna use this monitor here. I'm having some issues. I think it's just the desks themselves. Um, everything's kind of like bowing in on this left one here. 
So the monitor is kind of tilting and these monitors being that they are cheaper ones do not have any sort of swivel or I, I think they just have pitch up and down, um, but they don't tilt from side to side or anything like that. So it's going to take a little bit to kind of get them perfect. I do remember from when I had my triple screen monitor set up. Oh, that's actually pretty good there. A lot of it had to do with pitch back and forth. I mean, tilt back and forth. If you get them tilted just right, then all of a sudden it just seems to line up kind of like what we just experienced there. You can see that the bezels are very close to the same size as well as the height of the monitors are exactly the same. So the height of the CHG90 uh, height wise is the same as a 27 inch monitor. I have my <laughs> my 10, uh, what is this, a 10 to, well, I forgot exactly what lens this is, but this my wide angle lens all the way out and I still can't get all this monitor res, uh, <laughs> real estate on here. This is wide, this is really wide. And I can't see myself leaving it like this all the time because if you look all the way to the right, it is actually in my wife's office space. <laughs> so uh, yeah, this is not gonna stay as a permanent solution. This is gonna be every once in a while. Uh, we'll kind of just throw one monitor over there whenever I'm feeling froggy and we'll do this. But, Let's see if we could actually get this going. Um, we're gonna follow the instructions, very simple instructions that they gave us here, basically unboxing everything. Um, they want us to take the covers off first and then one. All right, so yeah, let's, let's give this a shot. So this is gonna be for the left monitor. We'll take the, protect the film off first. Now I can tell you this does not look clear at all. I don't know what, if maybe when we, put it up against the monitor, things behind it kind of get a little bit more legible, but you can see just that effect there. But uh, probably once we get it closer to the monitor, it'll be a little bit clearer, but I know it is using some trickery there to uh, get it, get that effect. So you push it, push the button down on the side, push the lens all the way in, and you let it go and then it holds it in place. Just a pressure clamp, that's all it is. All right, so we got this one tuned in a little bit more. The problem we were running into before was the very first step of the instruction says between 120 to 130 degrees from the center monitor to the side monitor. And I didn't do that. <laughs> and so uh, what ended up happening was, um, you kind of got this effect where uh, you were able to see the bezel because the lens here wasn't working in its proper angle. And now that I have it set to 130 degrees, it actually fits on there really nice and kind of holds the monitors together. You got these little legs on the top that have little springs. So you could see kind of that bezel is gone now. Um, and it doesn't look half bad. <laughs> we're gonna do that side um, and probably get rid of that mic stand uh, just for this video. Maybe I'll use my Mod Mic 5. And yeah, <laughs> this is crazy looking. Uh, in person, you could definitely see the lens. You could definitely see where it kind of like is blending in. I'm kind of wondering if I'm sitting here, being that this is so wide, if this is actually gonna be working at, at its optimal angle, or if I'm gonna be looking at it off angle and it's just gonna look weird and funny, being that I'm here and this is not a 16 by nine monitor setup. So that's another, science experiment we're trying to test here to see if there's maybe an optimal angle that we're going to be off of being that we're here at super wide anyway all right let's get to that side <laughs> it's like a magic trick new bezels <laughs> so awesome all right everyone so we're inside the rig here and just a few things i want to let you all know in case you want to do this within iRacing. So there's a few things you're going to have to adjust. Um, one, the title is going to have to be in windowed mode, windowed borderless, I highly suggest. You're going to notice a little line on the bottom there. I'm going to have to fine tune that out, but everything is done basically through the documents file um, within iRacing. So to get there, you go to your documents, you go to iRacing, you look for an app folder, an app file, uh, you open it with your notepad and then from within here, I know it's kind of hard to see, I apologize. Uh, you could adjust everything from base shakers to cam tools to force feedback, 
But what you're looking for is uh, graphics DX11. And from within there, you could set basically where the window position is. That's why we have this slight little line at the bottom. It's not perfect, but I, I can adjust that out. Uh, but you could also set a custom screen resolution. Um, I had to put windowed maximize to off or zero. Um, then you just file and save that whenever you have that all set up. So that brings us to this point here. Uh, well, not quite. There was something else I had to adjust too. And that was, you go to your options, you're going to want to go down to graphics and number of screens. You're going to have to put that to three. And then you're going to want to turn on multi projection because what that's going to do is that's going to actually project um, each screen or render each screen separately so that way you don't get that stretch look. Because if you leave it on one, what happens is, and I do notice you get a little bit better frame rate, slightly, but what it's gonna do is gonna take the single screen projection and stretch it out over the other two and it doesn't look right. Um, so you're gonna wanna turn on multi-projection, you get a little bit of a frame rate penalty, but it's worth it. Um, our FOV, I use Project Immersion's FOV calculator uh, we pretty much maxed this out at 179 um, because for some reason the FOV calculator in here wasn't working right. And then lastly, once you're in the car, just for a moment within pits, get back out to this menu here, hit control F12. That'll bring up your camera edit utility and then offset X on the top left is going to be your seat position. And you can basically find what seat position works for you, what feels the most comfortable. So, and then you're going to go to bottom right, save car, and then save your car cam. We already did that, so I'm not going to do that again. So let's, uh, let's throw this car out on the track. Now you may notice a slight black line. Let me move this over a little bit um, on either one of these. And that's only because uh, I have it set to where I'm sitting. And so the camera is slightly off angle from where I'm sitting. So from where I'm sitting, I can't see the bezels. It looks pretty darn perfect. Could use a little adjustment on this one. There we go. All right. So it looks very good to me, but if I were to adjust it for you, I would start to see the bezels and then obviously it's not, you know, genuine experience. So, uh, but for the most part, it does look pretty good. Um, I will say that the clear lenses are noticeable, but when you're racing, I can see that easily like melding away. Like you're not even going to notice it because it is clear. You could still read the text that's behind it very easily you can notice there is a little bit of a warping that's going on as a as the cursors kind of get further and closer away to you um and when one screen is black and the other one has something on it you kind of notice a little bit of a mirroring going on you can kind of see that with this cursor here that little bit of a mirror i don't see that from where i'm sitting um but it does happen especially if one screen has something uh, bright and this screen's black or something like that. You kind of notice that a little bit, but from within the title right now, I'm not really noticing too much of everything. Uh, it, it looks good. It just looks, it looks right. Um, I could see almost completely out my right window here. Uh, obviously the right mirror. I came and capture all of this on, the, on the camera. Um, on the left screen here, I could see the whole window, uh, and then just the edge of the pads from the seat itself. So I pretty much have it all mixed out um, as much as I could. So yeah, let's, let's see what this is like. So I haven't practiced this car and track combination yet. So we're at WeatherTech Raceway Laguna Seca and this is the BMW M8 GTE car. It's a fixed series in iRacing. Uh, so normally I would use, I know earlier I mentioned uh, some software and it's SRWE or a simple runtime window editor. That's what I would normally use. But for some reason, it doesn't see iRacing. It sees every other title but iRacing. And then if you're big in Project Cars 2, uh, you don't really need to use that because Project Cars 2 has a utility built in to do the same thing, which is really awesome that they did that. Um, kind of wish other titles would do the same. But this is this is awesome. Uh, the sense of speed that I'm getting is probably the first thing that hit me. Uh, the other thing is I feel like I'm being wrapped around completely by screens because 
it's almost out to the far sides of my periphery. It's too far out to the side for me to really be able to see what's going on in my periphery. I got to turn my head a little bit to see out of the passenger window, just a little bit. And if I glance over like I'm doing now, because I'm focusing on where I'm going, uh, those plastic pieces meld away completely. I just, it just feels like one continuous screen because I don't have the time to focus on whether or not there's a lens there or not. It's just all melding together, which is what it's meant to do. All right, so we're in the Corvette C7 Daytona prototype car. Completely different type of car within iRacing. And um, <clears throat> we're just gonna run it around the Nürburgring, kinda get our idea as to how it feels in this sort of scenario. Again, I can see completely out of my left wi window, my right window, I can see both mirrors very clearly. I have the virtual mirror up because this car, I guess, kind of necessitates that. I don't really see anything else. Man, the, just seeing the rest of the track, the trees, everything kind of blow by the sides is, it's almost making me a little bit more cautious, a little bit more nervous. All right, everyone. So here is basically the final result. Um, I kind of believe that if you have this mounted in a permanent solution where you actually have screen mounting um, kits where you can mount these screens permanently, you could even get this looking better because you could fine tune it and then permanently adjust it. And that's, that's it. It never moves. One thing I will say is that these pieces of uh, plastic here or acrylic, whatever it is, they do scuff quite easily, and I noticed it right out of the box um, that one of them did have a line that went right across it, unfortunately. Uh, it doesn't affect gameplay at all. I may contact them or Amazon and see if we could get a different one, different setup, because that's just going to bug me. Um, but when you're inside the sim, it doesn't bother me at all. But overall, I would say the experience is super immersive. It is temporary, so you could just take them off, and then, you know, what I plan on doing is just moving this one monitor over there whenever I'm doing my editing and whenever I feel like having triple screens and I just bring that monitor over this way and there we go, we get triple screens going. Um, but having these in place is absolutely immersive and amazing. It's, it, it's amazing how clear you could see them in person and it's like, oh yeah, it's obviously, it almost seems like a gimmick in a way. But once you're in the rig and you're moving, they melt away and you just notice the fact that you can't see the bezels. Now, what originally pushed me away from triple screens uh, a long time ago when I was running them were the bezels. Now, granted, those screens had quite large bezels, but if, if bezels bug you like they do me, this is definitely, and you're running 27s, this is definitely an option here. Now, again, going into the config files and messing around with uh, screen resolution is definitely a way to get it working in iRacing and then turning on multi-projection gets it working like a correct and proper multi-screen uh, setup and it worked great it felt great it looks great um, in other titles again I use a simple software called 
uh, simple runtime window editor, SRWE. It sees all the other titles, and if you're in iRacing often, I mean Project Cars 2's all, Project Cars 2 often, uh, that already has a utility built in, so you don't have to go through that hassle. Um, but this is this is immersive. Sitting here, uh, the screens pretty much go to the edge of my peripheral vision, and just seeing the trees blow by just gives you an even further sense of how fast you're going, which is which is awesome. It just made it fun, made it exciting again, and almost new. So everyone, I'm Crash with RTA Motorsports. This is our little science experiment for today, just to see how this works and if it does work, if we could get it working. And yeah, we got it working and it works absolutely great. Uh, let's, I mean, look at that. You can't beat that. Well, everyone, again, these are just uh, cheap Spectre uh, 27 inch monitors. I'll post the link below where you can find these. These work fine. Um, I did notice on this one here, the bezel was a little, a little bowed on one side, uh, just slightly, just enough that if you're putting it up against another monitor, um, you, you kind of notice that one side's perfectly straight. So I may switch these two uh, monitor positions. So that way we get the straight side <laughs> up against. Anyway, you know, that happens when you're looking at budget monitors, but um, they seem to work fine and they look great and had no issues fitting them up against my CHG90. Everyone, I hope you enjoyed this. A little bit of craziness. I'm Crash. This is RTA Motorsports. Have a great week. Stay safe, please. Have a good one.